Yeah. Uh, OK, so sustainable WordPress. So this talk is at um, ideas R, letter R, I-D-E-A-S-R dot sexy slash WCLAX. Uh, like all other talks, you can evaluate this talk at WCLAX dot reviews. Um, ask questions anytime, shout, raise your hand, anything, it's all good. Um, so my question is, what are the chances that your grandchildren will be able to read your blog? Um, so I've, <laughs> I've kind of had the impression that the answer to that question is maybe not that good for a few years now, but I've been afraid to answer that question as succinctly as uh, Daniel Walmsley did yesterday when he said, quite simply, any unmaintained website is going down, period. So, uh, okay, that's the bad news. <laughs> um, but Stephanie Savage, on the other hand, said, no one wants to die and discover that all you have to pass on to the next generation is your Facebook page. <laughs> so somewhere between unmaintained sites are going down and Facebook is not a legacy, we need to find a space for ourselves. So that's our mission today. Um, anybody know this painting? Yes. Right. How old is it? How about 126 years? Yeah, very old. Okay, so in art, we would call that a new painting. Yes. Right? We want paintings to survive for hundreds and thousands of years. And indeed, there are caves with paintings that are 16,000 years old, 40,000 years old. Uh, there is painting going back almost to the dawn of humanity. Um, and so it's kind of funny since I teach, so I'm, I'm at a sister school. This is CSULA. I teach at CSULB. Uh, we have a pretty large school of art. Uh, more students study art and design at Cal State Long Beach than any other public university in America. And we do a lot of ephemeral stuff, to be sure, but we do I'll think a lot about archival. And so it's kind of interesting that by day, oh, look at that. Who's that weirdo? Um, by day, you know, we look, we, we, we ask how long a painting can last, and then I come look at new media, and it's almost the gold standard of Silicon Valley to have a startup, get a bunch of users, get acquired, and then send that email that I think you probably all received. Um, want to thank you all so much. You have made this possible. We have been acquired. Uh, our technology is going to be used in a different way. We have made a freaking, I think that's a technical word, fortune and are moving to an island. And um, it wouldn't have been possible without you. Thank you. Oh, and we're deleting all your stuff in 36 hours. Right? We've all had that email. So what a contrast to uh, 126 years is new to we just got rich, you're out in 36 hours. Certainly that's not WordPress, but it is the, the environment that we live in, is that so much of these exciting new media tools are very, very ephemeral. Uh, and yet we say ars longa, vita brevis. So maybe art and blogs should last longer. Um, anybody been to the Louvre? Isn't that crazy how much we care about that one little tiny painting on a rotting piece of wood? We really care. So if it's Starry Night or the Mona Lisa or the life of Kim Kardashian, that is going to be preserved. We really care. Uh, but your blog, maybe not so much. Your blog maybe is just a rosebud sled that we don't know what to do with, <laughs> and we're going to throw it in an incinerator. OK, so um, I would like to show you some of my dad's photos of my mom. Um, so these are circa 1965. This is the Leica M3 that he took them with. Your mom is beautiful. Thank you. You don't get to keep it, but you can play with it. Um, so OK, there's mom. Mom, mom, oh, there's my. So uh, my dad passed away a few years ago. And um, before he passed away, he only asked me for one thing. But he asked me for that thing on a number of occasions. 
And the one thing that he wanted from his only son was show my slides. As he realized that his time on this earth was coming to a close, the one thing that meant the most to him was that these images that he had spent decades of his life making and caring about, that if he had to leave, he wanted them to go on. So again, you know, it's interesting to think about. So here's the crazy thing. The Eastman Kodak Company, as I'm sure we all know, no longer exists. But Dad's Kodachrome slides are still vibrant and vivid and as beautiful as they were a half a century ago. My question, my fear, is that with WordPress, we might have the exact opposite situation. That Eastman Kodak is gone, but the Kodachromes are still beautiful. With WordPress, if we go into the future, it's a pretty robust platform, right? The platform's probably going to be here, but what about my blog? Could it be the opposite of Kodak's gone, but the slides are still here? Could it be that WordPress, the platform, is still here, but my blog isn't? Um, so that would be the day of my birth. <laughs> So I guess if I put it on a dating website, I'll have to caption it not entirely recent. <laughs> um, so what can we say about this, this WordPress um, scenario? So here's the good news. You all know this. It's a robust open source project, a vast developer community, a solid, stable, secure platform. That's all true, yes? Yeah. <laughs> OK, but here's the maybe not so good part. Millions of sites that may or may not be updated. Individual sites filled with themes and plugins that may, I think may is being generous, that may develop vulnerabilities sooner or later. Um, and then that was the point that I just made. So um, I think you probably get my point. But if you think about, you know, if you turn out to be the next Socrates, your blog is good because <laughs> It doesn't matter if you maintain it. Enough of our culture cares about what your powerful ideas were, and we're going to maintain that for you. But my argument is that history shouldn't only be about brilliant philosophers. History shouldn't only be about assassinations, about Julius Caesar and John F. Kennedy and Charlie Hedbo, that it should also be about ordinary people, that history and blogs should be I went somewhere today. I met someone. Maybe I saw them for one day and never again, but it changed the trajectory of my life. Or maybe that person dot, dot, dot turns out to be your great grandmother. So I don't want to lose all of these things that we value not on a global scale, but on a small scale. Wouldn't it be great if your great grandchildren could read your blog, watch your videos, see your photos? So I had uh, lunch yesterday with Marie Dodson, the editor of Torque, and she told me about um, a blogger that you all may know about. I was new to, I missed the story, but um, this woman, Kate Swaffer, do you know her about her story? So she, um, she has younger onset dementia, so it's at a much younger age than, than typical, and she has created this blog, she's Australian. She's apparently gotten quite a bit of notoriety. And it does a few things. It shares her experiences with people who don't have that experience. It creates community with people who do have that experience. But as much as any of those things, it's also her own offline, mem off brain memory bank to remember things she thought, experiences she had. So it's another just really extraordinary. And I've got links if you want to. Um, there's the, this Torque article, and there's her own website. Um, what an amazing use of, of WordPress. Uh, so she's using it today in her life here on Earth. But again, whenever she might pass at some future time, I wouldn't want that site to go down. I, I think that site is a piece of our human culture that I'd like to stay up forever. Now, she's actually become pretty famous with that, and so I don't think her site personally is in jeopardy. But what about all the people who don't reach her level of notoriety? We want those too, I think. So, oh, OK. Well, so then we come to that theme I bought one Christmas. <laughs> um, so I, I dropped by Theme Forest. Anybody ever been there, <laughs> Theme Forest? So I bought this really cool theme that I thought would be awesome for my virtual Christmas card. And um, 
Well, this is the result of installing that theme. <laughs> um, so I use Wired Tree. They're a pretty cool host. I like, I like their service quite a bit. Um, I've got, I don't know, 50, 60 websites spread across five C panels. And this theme that I paid good money for, but apparently it wasn't such a good theme, it had a vulnerability. And some bots found it you know, relatively quickly. Um, so I think, I think it was, I don't even know what it was doing, but I think it was like spamming somebody and who that somebody complained to Wired Tree. And Wired Tree sent me an email. But of course, I'm not a sysadmin, I teach art. I was at school when the email that my site was bad came through. Six hours later, when I hadn't fixed the site, Wired Tree took um, not just the one bad Christmas card site, but the whole cPanel, which happened to be my family cPanel, so my dad's website, my mom's website, every family website went down, um, and this is what went up. So I guess my note to web hosts, if there are any here, is if you have to take a site down, which realistically that can happen, you know, it, it, I mean, you may not have a choice. If you have to take a website down, maybe the, the screen could say something like, Technical difficulties, <laughs> working to get this site back up soon, and not <laughs> so that when my mom's friends from church go to her site to see the cute nephew and niece photos from the Easter party, uh, that they think my mom is a terrorist. <laughs> so I think this is probably not the best wording for w the scenario that it happened. OK, so what are the solutions? So I mentioned I had lunch with Marie. And she said, so what's the answer? You, you really identified an interesting problem. What's the answer? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> and she said, you cannot tell us that all our sites are going down and then not give us an answer, let alone at the last talk of the last day of WordCamp. <laughs> hey, all your sites are going down. See you at 2016. So um, the cool thing about speaking on Sunday is that you can do a lot of research on Saturday and you can chat with sponsors and hosts and, and attendees. And so I got lots of free advice on this topic. Uh, so one piece of advice was, well, maybe you should try managed hosting instead of a VPS. Another piece of advice was, WordPress or any dynamic content will not survive in the long term. Um, you should use static HTML on something like Amazon EC2. Uh, use plugins that are updated frequently. <laughs> use large web hosts, like the ones that are here, uh, that will probably stick around. Do everything on the WP Codex hardening WordPress. A complicated password will not help you, but two-factor authentication is essential. And um, maybe WordPress.com is cooler than you think. <laughs> <laughs> so that made me wonder, uh, well, this is a pretty, a pretty, it's a large, robust, and a pretty smart community, right? So what is it that WordPress developers use? So I made an extremely small, extremely non-scientific survey of what WordPress developers use. And here's what I discovered in my tiny survey. So uh, uh, Helen Hu Sandy uses uh, self-hosted WordPress, aka WordPress.org. Uh, Constantine Oberland uses WordPress.com. Andrew Nason uses self-hosted WordPress. And Ryan Cowles uses both. <laughs> so from my very small survey, it seems that there isn't one dominant approach, that both of these approaches are uh, out there and maybe useful. And what can we do with this? So the, other, the next thing I want to just kind of throw out your way is this idea of digital afterlife, that it's obviously a new topic that we haven't thought too much about yet, but that clearly is going to be coming up more and more as time goes by. Um, so there's a lot of stuff out there. In Trusted, so this is pretty interesting. We might have time. Maybe I'll play one of these little videos for you. Um, but so Entrusted's a, a digital assets management company. What's interesting is if you go to entrusted.com, that URL now redirects to securesafe.com. So <laughs> the good news is that if you bought an account with them, they passed it on to somebody else. But the interesting news is that if you bought an account with them and you are still alive today, then you have already outlived Entrusted. <laughs> Um, uh, Liveson.org, pretty interesting. When your heart stops beating, you will keep tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And then, as you may know, uh, Google, I guess in, in, in 2013, I think, uh, created the inactive account manager that lets you specify if you're inactive for a certain period of time that they can give the keys to someone else. Uh, so I've got, a, I've got a bunch of links for inactive account manager here and also a video about how that's working. Uh, there's Yahoo ending. There's a Facebook memorialization request. Uh, there's also a Facebook look back video. So anybody familiar with California AB 691? Okay, so this is right now. This is like September 2015. AB 691 is the Privacy Expectation Afterlife and Choices Act. So the first interesting thing about this bill is that I think up till now we have thought of privacy as something that living people have. But this bill is now considering the privacy of someone who's dead, who's passed away. Um, the positive spin on this bill, so basically what this bill says, as best I understand it, is that if you, unless you explicitly specify um, an heir to, to receive your accounts, that all of the places where you have content uh, will be locked forever and no one can ever have it. So the positive spin on this is we're really trying to protect your privacy. The cynical spin is that none of these companies want to deal with your heirs, and so they want a bill that says, um, if you didn't specify something specifically, we are not talking to your relatives. It's just gone. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I imagine it'll probably pass. I don't really know. Um, and then I've got a couple more videos and a couple of uh, links to some info on that topic. So. How much time do I have? Huh? Um, another 20 minutes. Okay, so why don't, we, why don't I just show you one of these little videos? Just it kind of sets the stage a little bit. Um, if we have sound, we'll find out, huh? Oh, there's no, oh, because it would just be coming through that. Oh, maybe we should skip it then. You probably won't be able to hear that much, huh? Oh, the, pretty clever. It's an online resource for your digital assets. We have wills for our... My inverse mousing skills are poor. <laughs> are material things, but what do you do with your online things when you Can you hear this? What exactly does your company do? So Entrusted was started in 2008. It started after reading The World is Flat by Thomas Friedman. He talks about Justin Ellsworth, who was a US Marine, killed in Iraq. And his parents didn't have much to remember him by, so they wanted access to his Yahoo account. So they asked Yahoo for access. Yahoo said, no way, it's against our terms of service. It went to court, and three months later, uh, a judge actually said, okay, hand over all of the accounts to, uh, to Justin's parents. And um, so it's sort of made two points. One, these are real assets that uh, you, know, you can treat as your own, your own assets, and you should play it for. And two, um, sort of raised the question of, well, what if Justin didn't want his parents reading every single email he had ever sent or received? So what Entrusted does is list all of your digital assets, which is any online account that you own, or any file that's stored on your computer. And if you want to pass to people, you can identify up to 10 different errors to pass them on to, and you select a digital executor, so someone who actually receives all the information after you pass away and makes the transfers and deletions. For certain things like a Facebook account, I'd probably give it to a trusted friend. Or something like an email account, I may want to delete it. For a blog, uh, I'd get some sort of advertising revenue on. Um, I would probably pass it on to a kid. My brother and I share family photos, so I would leave my uh, Casa you know, web albums to my brother. Facebook has 112 million users. Um, okay. By the way, 285,000 of them will die this year. So this really? is a huge problem for them. It's a huge problem for any company. Facebook is probably uh, the most proactive about all of these problems. A family member or friend can sign on to Facebook and uh, report the passing, and they do a memorialized status. 
Gmail, uh, if you play around far enough into the help pages of Google, you'll eventually stumble upon what they do. Um, and what it is is you have to collect like five different legal documents and you bundle them all up into a manila envelope and you send it to uh, Mountain View, California. <laughs> and then six to eight weeks later, uh, magically it will show up on your door. And that's a huge inefficiency. There's there's no way for companies to know when users have passed away. Mm -hmm. And even if they did know that the users have passed away, they don't know what they had wanted done with it. So we developed a corporate partnership program. They can log into their corporate partner account on our website, and in real time, they'll be updated, you know, who's alive, who's dead, mm -hmm. and uh, whether they wanted it transferred or deleted. So it's sort of a way to tidy up and make a turnkey solution for all of the companies. What happens when you have some uh sensitive information online, which a lot of us have, and uh, you, know, you don't want anyone else dead or alive to ever know that this has existed. Are you familiar with a company called Ashley Madison? I am. Isn't that the website where married people or people that are in relationships can go and date other people? Yeah, this is true. And um, yes. surprising, or maybe not surprising, <laughs> is that they have uh, approaching five and a half million users in North America. For those Tiger Woods out there, we've created a product called the Account Incinerator. And for $20 per account per year, you can actually uh, identify those, those accounts that you may own. And we as a company will automatically uh, clean them up and get rid of them. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jesse. And if you want to learn more, you can go to trusted.com. I'm Ellie Roundtree, and this is the Rock of Tech. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it is kind of funny, but I think that there's some core serious issues there as well. Yeah. So, um, uh, so what are my questions and solutions? So, I, I love this uh, this gigantic Jenga that SiteGround has out there with you know the the names of different qualities of your site and the idea that if, if you start to take some of those away that crash boom which is obviously what I'd like to avoid so I so I overheard we've got to stop people from saying WordPress is a blogging platform WordPress is a CMS now obviously that is true to some degree uh, but I think it's probably already pretty clear for me WordPress is in fact a blogging platform. Um, that's really what I'm passionate about. That's really what I care about. Um, so the good news is, if you are using WordPress as a CMS, it's probably in a business context, in which case there's a budget to maintain the site. If that business ever comes to us an end, the site could probably go down and nobody would be unhappy. So it's good, you can leave now. Oh wait, but Alex is doing a closing, right? So you can't leave now. You still have to stay. You can't leave even though you're good. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the doors are locked. It's like est. <laughs> uh, if you still think WordPress is a blogging platform, a place to express ideas and moments of your life, large and small, well, then it's going to be more complicated. Um, so I, I don't have the really the neat answer that Marie asked me to generate yesterday, but all I really have is to say that it's going to depend on your circumstances. Uh, so some thoughts I have, you know, I think again, maybe different from a business scenario where you kind of have a clearer mission, even if it changes a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people start blogs just, hey, I should start a blog and talk about stuff. And you know, it goes wherever it goes from there. Um, but at some point, it's probably worth backing up and saying, you know, what am I using this blog? What am I using WordPress for? What are my intentions? Um, if for any reason, like I have a second child and I no longer have a minute to spare, or indeed if I pass away, uh, if for any reason I stop blogging. And so imagine you write a book like ink on paper. You now have this book and you can put it on your shelf, or you can put 50 copies on your shelf. And you do not have to take that book off your shelf every week and check the title page to make sure if that title page still loads. <laughs> you could leave that book on your shelf for five years without ever checking it, and when a friend finally comes over, you could blow a little dust off, hand them the book, and every single page of that book will load, mm -hmm. unless you have like you know termites or something. <laughs> um, so if for any reason I stop maintaining my site, uh, is it OK if it goes down? Are you fine with that, or do you still want it to stay up? So compromise. <laughs> um, Maybe a site, a platform like WordPress.com is a middle way between the proprietary constraints of something like Facebook uh, versus the freedom and risk of a self-hosted installation. Um, so if you aren't going to be around to maintain your site, 
um, what could you do? You could set up a trust fund to pay uh, DNS fees, hosting fees, and somebody to update stuff. Obviously, we're getting more auto update, but uh, we're not there yet. Um, you could let automatic do it for you. Again, maybe a reasonable choice. Or you could take another perspective, which is just, uh, I will trust that the Internet Archive and or the NSA will archive all my content for me. <laughs> now, when I say NSA, I'm kind of kidding. But Internet Archive might actually be a viable scenario. Um, because you know, I mean, if you think in terms of long tail, probably there aren't going to be a zillion people who want to look at your stuff. But it would be nice if your great grandkids could, uh, or if some researcher who's interested and somehow you come up could. So you know, the Internet Archive might actually, I mean, rather than driving yourself crazy, or in my own case, um, I think WordPress.com does rock. I make 300 students a year build WordPress.com ePortfolios. But the truth is, I, host, I have my own stuff on self-hosted sites. I do like the flexibility uh, of that platform. So I'm kind of mixed. I don't know if I want to go back. Maybe I should just say, look, you know, by the time I'm gone, who's really going to want to look at this stuff? Maybe Internet Archive is enough. I don't know. Um, plugins. I used to think that plugin conflicts right here and now were a big deal. Now I think that's nothing. Because if you think about it, a plugin conflict the same day that you discover that conflict, you're probably going to have it solved before the end of that day, right? You'll do some A-B stuff, figure out what's conflicting with what. You'll find an alternative, or you'll give something up, or you'll make a choice, and that's done. But I think, I think if you're really interested in like a long-term blog, that plugins are just really dangerous. Um, I think there's different kinds of plugins. So if you have a plugin, for example, that's putting little icons next to your list of posts, that plugin could probably break and your site is OK. But if you, for example, pick like a Google Maps plugin, and by the way, I went to the repository this morning, and there are 535 Google Maps plugins for you to choose from. If you pick one of those and it breaks, you now have a bunch of pages that have Google Maps stuff on them that's not going to work. So your site, even you don't even have to be dead. It could just be a couple years from now, and your site's already problematic. So I think any plugin that you're going to get locked into is really tough. Yes, there are a few big plugins from, that have a bunch of developers on them. Maybe you're a little safer there. But so many plugins are going to have one developer. Um, that's not their day job, for the most part, right? It, so even if they're updating it every week today, Maybe five years from now, they have a second child, or get hit by a bus, or get a real job. And that's not going to be maintained. So I, I feel like if it's a plugin that you can add and remove, that might work out. But if it's a plugin that you're going to get locked into stuff on pages, and those pages aren't going to work with w when that plugin is, is broken or removed, it's really tough for the long run, I think. Um, so and in the case of, say, Google Maps, for example, you know, you can get a Google Maps embed code straight from, from the map. It may not do as much as some of the plugins do. There may be other features you want. But if I could just keep it between, you know, Google Maps and WordPress core and not have to introduce a plugin, I feel it's a little bit safer. So those are kind of my thoughts on, on how to make that work. And I guess it's your turn now. Do you guys have tips or, you know, what you might do to have a blog that lives long enough for your grandkids to read it? Yeah, there's one proven method is put it in a transcribe. Everything's a papyrus and put it in a cave in the desert. <laughs> thousands of years. You're guaranteed thousands of years. Unless humans breathe on it. Don't touch it or ever look at it. Seal it, okay. Fine. Other tips. <laughs> you know, you were talking about the NSA, but uh, somebody on MSNBC or CNN, one of those um, cable channels, he was talking when the big controversy happened about you know, our data is there, uh, everything. So somebody said that eventually, 100 years from now, whatever, they're going to release that data, and researchers can go and piece in things together. So you know, I was actually thinking about that, that like, if you think about like presidential documents, that those are, those are secret for some period of time, and then you know, 20 or whatever years later, it is public, and that it, maybe the NSA stuff could become public at some point. Although their, their stuff may not be structured in a way that's reader friendly. I don't know about that. So, but I think that's an interesting alternative. So I mean, if, if you wanted to make a blog for your grandchildren to read, what would you do? I think you're right about WordPress.com being maybe a better choice. Do you use that now? 
I have an account that I just don't, uh, you know, it's for Jetpack or whatever. So, so you do self-hosted normally, yeah. but you think maybe that is a... Maybe. Well, I, you know what? The truth is probably most people are not thinking about that, but we need to think about it. You're absolutely right. What is, what is the policy of WordPress.com with inactive accounts? Do they shut them down? Um, I believe, so if you had like a custom domain name or, or custom features, you would either have to have set up some way to pay for those or those would probably come down. <laughs> but the site itself, the, the me.wordpress.com, I think would be up forever or as long as automatic lives. You guys don't shut down inactive accounts that haven't been touched for five years? We don't, years. and so we don't purge content or anything like that, and we don't recycle accounts either. So, so if you have your name.wordpress.com, even if you don't log in for 10 years, 20 years, whatever, in theory, that should just continue to live on. Like any upgrade you have, like a domain name or that kind of thing, will expire and not renew, but your content will still be live and accessible. Although even if you wanted to try to maintain those upgrades, you know, that would be like one check that one person had to write. That would be simpler than. Yeah, definitely. So Ryan and I were talking yesterday. We were trying very hard not to turn this into a commercial for WordPress.com, but it does seem like a decent solution. What if WordPress.com doesn't exist 50 years from now? What? Well, here's the thing. I mean, it's the same as a house. You pass your house down, and you still have to pay taxes, and your kids yeah. still have to maintain the house. The kids have to at least be able to pay the taxes. Same kind of analogy. So if you're self-hosted, yeah. your kids have to renew the domain name, and if they want, if your children are want to maintain, they still it. want the house. Right. Yeah. So, so whatever your choice is, you're going to have to have some. Right. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I think. If, I mean, that's. I mean, I think if. I guess the WordPress project is not equal to automatic, so in theory they could go away, but that seems, I mean, obviously they're a pretty significant part of that. Yeah, okay, they can't go away. Never mind, I didn't say that. Well, by just brainstorming, I think I would do, I would download my, my, my website, I would create PDF files, I would put in a, in a pen drive with the PDF plugin or whatever software you need, to, to do it because you don't know if 50 years from now PDF is going to be at there. At what point? What if you get hit by a bus tomorrow? Then I, then I go, no, then I put on, on, on a bank or something in a, in a safe. No, no. So you it's, don't, it's you they don't know when you're going, is what I'm saying. You know no, yeah, I, I would yeah. just automatize that, you know, for, oh, oh, for right. when it happens, you know, so yeah. it could go outlive my, my grandkids, yeah, maybe, yeah. you know, yeah. just like a jewelry, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I'll do something like that. You know? Is, is that a dialogue that is happening at WordPress? The, um, the, the are going to become an issue, and it's, yeah. it's, so it's, it's really interesting. Very interesting. I, I mean, I think partially the answer is that if, if, you, if you die without having specified something, yeah. you're leaving it to your heirs and different companies to all. Maybe you come back from the <laughs> explanation. And well, and if that AB 691 does indeed pass, then I guess that would say that if you didn't specify something, then it's just gone. So. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's, it's kind of weird, particularly if, if, well, I guess with material property, so if you're old and you die, you've probably left your house to someone. Right. If you're young and you die, maybe your parents will decide what to do with your car. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.